In this video we are going to see Hall effect and its application. Hall effect is a very important phenomenon used in electronics. It is named after Edwin Hall who discovered it in the year 1879. Before getting into the basic physics behind the Hall effect, let me speak out the basic statement of Hall effect. The statement is, when a current carrying conductor is placed in a transverse magnetic field say B, an electric field E is induced in the direction perpendicular to both current I and magnetic field B. Let me write down the statement for reference here. To prove this statement and understand the basic physics behind this, let us consider a piece of material with dimensions say length L, width W and thickness T and let us assume a current is flowing in this direction say I. And to have reference directions let us define some directions. Let's say this direction is x and this direction is y and this direction which will be coming out of the video towards you is z direction. Three of them are mutually orthogonal to each other. Means perpendicular to each other. Now let us consider magnetic field B in z direction. So let me mark it down here let us take magnetic field in z direction okay and this i the current is flowing in x direction here right magnetic field in y direction and current in x direction now let us consider this material is say n type material in which majority carriers are electrons so let us consider an electron okay the electron flow will be in the opposite direction to that of the conventional current direction. So if you consider an electron here, its direction will be in this direction which it will be moving in. Okay. Let us consider this electron whose charge is minus Q, where Q here is 1.6 times 10 power minus 19 coulombs. And it is traveling in minus x direction with a velocity say V. Let me write down V in minus x direction. Now you have magnetic field in z direction, electron moving in minus x direction with a velocity v. Now there will be Lorentz force applied on the electron here. Let us consider Lorentz force equation. F equals to force applied on the particle, in this case the charge is minus q times the velocity minus x, okay, vector quantity, cross product with the magnetic field direction here, which is z. Now, what this Lorentz force equation means is, if a particle of charge, say, minus q in this case, is moving with a velocity v in a magnetic field b, then this f will be the force that will be acting upon this charge particle. Okay, taking this into consideration, now this is moving in minus x direction and magnetic field is in z direction, so the force will be in minus y direction. Let us see here. This is in minus x direction, okay, velocity and magnetic field in z direction. If you take cross product minus x direction cross product to z direction, you'll have y direction, right? this will be y direction. Now you have a negative sign here coming from the charge of the electron. So the overall force will be acting in negative y direction. So this electron will be pushed towards the bottom phase of this material. Now for reference let me write down or take this phase as phase 1 and the top one as phase Okay, so now this electron is pushed towards the bottom face of this piece of semiconductor. Now the electrons will be pushed towards this side and electrons start accumulating. Okay, as the electrons start accumulating what happens is this phase, phase 1 will be negative with respect to the phase 2. So we can take the potentials with respect to each other this the top face will be positive and the bottom face will be negative 
so we have a potential difference building up as the accumulation increases now if we observe here carefully as the electron accumulation is increasing the potential difference is increasing as the potential difference is increasing the electric field will be increasing as well let me take a different color uh, let's take orange okay the electric field will be in this direction okay which is in minus y direction because of this potential build up now if we observe carefully this electric field is in minus y direction okay now electric field will apply some force on these electrons okay the force applied on the electrons will be equal to minus q the charge of the electron times the electric field here which is in minus y direction if you see this direction is minus y and the charge if you see the overall will be in y direction so the force is in y direction if you look at this Lorentz force equation it is in minus y so now let's take a step back and see as this Lorentz force equation is making the charge electrons accumulate at bottom phase the potential difference increases as a result electric field increases and electric field will put some force on these electrons in the opposite direction so at some point this force due to Lorentz force and force due to the built up of electric field will balance out each other okay let's call this electric field as Hall electric field EH okay so at that point where these forces both equal each other there won't be any further accumulation of electrons at the bottom phase okay that's a steady state now if we if you see this phase 1 and phase 2 the charges accumulated phase 1 and stay there and there is a potential difference which we call VH and relationship between EH and VH is EH equals VH over the thickness of the semiconductor material here and the forces are equal here and I'm going to take the magnitude of both and if you write Q times V times B now I'm not taking any directions and just taking the magnitudes and if you see here V bar cross B bar we are writing VB because as we are assuming V and B are perpendicular to each other so V times B times sine theta will be equal to V cross B so sine 90 is 1 so we'll have V times B which is equal to Q times Hall electric field EH which can be written okay again like uh, Q times VB equals Q times VH over T and let's cancel out Q so we'll have V times B equals VH times okay this is over T VH over T so this is an equation now if we see J the current density equals to the current density flowing here okay I is the current flowing into it and we we can say J is the current density flowing into it so J equals Q times N times V velocity of the charges here so if we rewrite this particular equation here we can write it as J over Q times N times B equals VH over T let me rewrite this J in terms of I okay I over W times T W times T is the cross section area okay J J equals I over W times T if you rewrite it here in this equation we'll have I times B times W times T times Q times N equals to VH over T let's cancel out this thickness which is common here and there okay and let let's take some space down okay if you rewrite this equation we'll have I times B over W times Q times N equals to VH okay now 1 over QN is equal to VH times W over 
b times i this 1 over q times n we are going to call this as r h okay r h is hall coefficient so if you rewrite this equation let me rewrite r h equals v h w by v times i this is the equation for calculating hall coefficient now if you look at it carefully vh is something which you can calculate by using a measuring divisor for voltage across these two phases phase 1 and phase 2 and width we can know from the dimensions of the material you're going to use and current is the value of current flowing into the material okay and b is the magnetic field in which we place the semiconductor material or say conductor so we can calculate this rh now we have another quantity let's say j we have written it so far in q times n times v right we can write it also in sigma times e bar and this q n can also be written as q n drift velocity v can be written in terms of mu times mu n actually times e okay this electric field here we are pointing out is not e h it is a different electric field it is corresponding to the voltage you apply across this semiconductor material across the length due to which there is electric field e and due to which there is current i okay this is a different electric field so if you rewrite this okay we have sigma equals to q times n times mu n if you rewrite this we know that rh equals 1 over q n so if we take this sigma equals 1 over rh times mu n okay and let me rewrite this mu n equals sigma times rh this is another important equation okay so now we have two important equations one is rh which is hull coefficient equals to vhw by bi and the other is mobility which can be measured by knowing the conductivity and RH okay so far we have considered n type material in which let me summarize the formulas we, we derived RH equals VH W over B times I and mu n equals sigma times RH the sigma is here sigma n right so the electrons were accumulating in the phase one which is the bottom phase now let us consider if it is a p type what will happen let me take a hole here okay which is traveling in this direction right when you have current flowing in this direction hole will be moving in this direction let me take it with velocity v now if you take Lorentz force equation f equals the charge here is positive q which is electron charge but it is positive here as it is whole q times v times v cross b right if you take the vector quantities v is in let me take the directions here again y and this is it it is in positive x direction and v is in positive z direction if you take that properly x times z you will have this v cross b pointing in minus y direction and overall will also be minus y direction so f will be in y now these holes will be forced downwards so these holes go and accumulate in the phase one okay or the bottom phase of the semiconductor material here okay so now as the holes are accumulating in the bottom phase this becomes positive with respect to the top phase so there will be a hall voltage built up due to which there will be electric field this electric field will be pointing topwards which will actually oppose this Lorentz force as a result these forces will balance out at some point where it reaches steady state so if you do the same derivation for the p-type also okay you'll have the equations r h equals to v h w over b times i okay where in this case the previous case okay in n type r h was equal to 1 over q times n whereas in this case r h equals to 
1 over q times p where p is number of holes per centimeter cube and here n is number of electrons per centimeter cube if i write mu p mobility of holes sigma p times rh okay so if you are given two materials okay one is n type and the other is p type so if you apply current in x direction and uh, magnetic field in z direction if you see top face positive and bottom face negative it is n type if you see top face negative and bottom face positive it is p type semiconductor material okay let us see a few applications in this case okay the first one is measuring carrier concentration how do you measure measure carrier concentration so we have seen we have rh right in both cases we have seen which is equals to vhw over bi as all these are measurable quantities because you are applying the current through the semiconductor material and you are keeping that semiconductor material in a magnetic field b which should be known and vh is the developed one which we can measure by using a voltmeter and width w is the dimension one of the dimensions of the semiconductor material so rh we can obtain which for n type rh equals to 1 over q times n we know the charge of the electron so n we can find out in case of p type we'll have 1 over q times p we can find out p so we can find out carry concentration and finding out mobility right sigma equals sorry mu equals sigma rh so now as we can find out rh and sigma in both cases n type and p type we can find mu either it may be mu n or mu p so we have seen mu n equals to sigma n times rh and mu p equals to sigma p times rh and magnetic field meter how do we use this uh, concept for magnet measuring magnetic field as we know rh equals vh w over bi if we write vh we can write it as rh times i over w as a factor times b okay if you take this as a proportionality constant keeping i as constant or a known value so vh will be directly proportional to b the voltage which you measure across the two phases will be directly proportional to the magnetic field in which you keep the semiconductor material with known current flowing through it okay now how do we use this as hall effect multiplier okay if you see this carefully here rh okay if we write the equation rewrite the equation again from the from here to here vh can be written as rh over w times b times i so we get a hall voltage measurement which will be directly proportional to the multiplication of two parameters okay a magnetic field and current flowing through the semiconductor material right okay so these are few of the applications and practically you can see some applications like uh, building sensors with this hall effect concept and uh, you can see some computer peripherals like uh, keyboards which are very reliable okay which are built with hall effect okay and there are multiple applications based on this concept hall effect and thanks for watching the video and if you like the video please do subscribe and thanks for watching